Hello everyone, welcome to a very chatty video where I talk about my struggles with making and drawing fan art, which I know is very ironic because the footage you're watching is literally just me making fan art from a very popular anime. I swear that the irony here is 100% intentional. For those who don't know me or are new to my videos, hello, welcome, my name is Gail. I'm a graphic designer, artist, and an illustrator. I run my small business, Abigail in Arts, while also being a full-time college student, a content creator, and working a part-time job. This video isn't about that though. This is a video about some recent realizations I've had about myself and my work, and I felt that my experiences are ones that a lot of artists can definitely relate to, and I wanted to share them here in this little video. This video is specifically about my struggles with making fan art in the past and how I'm having a lot more fun doing it now. I'm going to open by giving a little bit of context. I've never been much of a fan of making fan art personally. I love when other people do it. I think many people are very talented and excel at making wonderful fan art, but it's never been something that was desirable for me to make or that inspired excitement or happiness within me while making it. There's a few reasons for that and I'm going to break them all down into a couple different categories or reasons. The first reason I've struggled to make fan art in the past well, it's actually a reason that I still struggle with now, is composition. A lot of fan artists out there make absolutely excellent work that's of characters they like or media they like that's just the characters on a blank or really simple background. And I in no way mean to downplay these artists or their skill, but that's just never been appealing to me as an artist. I'm not interested in making artwork where a popular character is front and center and that's all there is to the image. I like creating work that has more of a narrative going on with it, or at least a deeper and more complex composition of the image itself. As an example, one of my favorite pieces of fan art I think I've ever made was a piece I made back in I think 2020 or 2021. And it was this large landscape painting I made of Coraline's garden. It features one of my favorite shots from Coraline with her exploring the other father's garden and it has the actual landscape, the setting, the lighting, the colors. That's really what takes priority in it is the actual landscape and the scene and the setting of the piece, not just the character of Coraline herself. I just find that far more interesting as a composition to make. It's much more fun and challenging for me than just drawing the character. So whenever I would make fan art of anything, I would always draw the character with some sort of background, some sort of space for them to exist in. This made a lot of my fan art into something that was more of like an actual artwork and a whole piece, not just an isolated character that could be turned into stickers, prints, keychains, pins, and what have you. Which is what a lot of people want when they're looking at fan art. Not a lot of people want a fully illustrated piece that has a whole background and a scene. It's just a personal preference thing. It's just interesting to compare that to myself because I've always enjoyed fan art more with characters in believable spaces. I think it just comes down to personal preference, but it did place some restraints on me in my personal enjoyment of creating fan art because I always used to only create fan art if I could put it into some sort of scene or environment, but I just want to clarify that that's not really the case for me now. This sort of ties into my next point, which is something that I only recently discovered because I didn't realize it, but I don't enjoy making complete finished pieces of fan art. Unless they're really big, complex landscape shots with like really detailed spaces, I just found that I don't really enjoy making finished pieces of fan art, specifically of characters. I've always found that I have a lot more fun with making fan art when it's in my sketchbook and I can draw the same character over and over again on an open spread in different poses, playing with different expressions, than just drawing a character once and confined to the dimensions of the paper. I found that I really enjoy layering and playing with the composition of multiple poses and that I prefer a much more playful, sketchy, messy style when it comes to making fan art. So most of the time I do things like I don't actually fully render the skin. I keep the white of the paper intact and I use a primary color from the character's color palette to give shadows and shading instead of adding skin tones, which I find to be just a lot more I don't know, character and personality focused. I feel like it brings the overall composition and color palette together better 
and in the end it creates a much more playful result than what I would do if I was meticulously and fully rendering a piece. I've also realized that I really enjoy playing with my line weights and textures and color blocking, so instead of fully rendering, say like, a black jacket, I block out areas to be totally black, so I lay down like an accent color and then I layer lines and hatching with my fineliner on top of that to build up texture. I feel like it adds a lot more personality to my fan art and just my art in general to keep it a lot more sketchy, and that process this is far more enjoyable to me than fully rendering a character. And this is important because not that long ago, I was kind of stuck in this mindset that if I was going to make fan art, it would only be if it was a fully finished, fully rendered piece. And in my head, I also put this frankly really strange restriction on myself that it had to be done digitally, which was another problem because despite having been doing digital art for like six years now, I still haven't really found the style that I want to use for character illustrations, especially for fan art. I still don't know how I would consistently like to render characters. I, I just don't know. I want to be 2D and playful, sort of like my traditional style, but I also like a more 3D look which really limits the personality of my work to me. So I'm still struggling to identify what I really want my digital style to be, specifically for drawing characters, and trying to force myself to only make fully rendered fan art digitally was really not helping me at all. My strengths in character illustration are currently in the physical, traditional space, and it's taken me a long time to realize that it's okay for me to play into my strengths. Turning away from techniques and the actual artistic process, my next reason for struggling to make fan art in the past, and something that's admittedly still a struggle, is that I don't like drawing what's popular. And this is in no way me trying to come off as being different or edgy, it's just a fact. I don't really like what's currently popular. Most of the popular shows right now are just things I don't like or characters I don't really like. For example, Jujutsu Kaisen is very popular right now, and I just don't really enjoy this show at all, really. I've watched season one and two and I just could not get into it. I like Inumaki, I think he's a very interesting character, but he's just a side character who's barely in the show, and he's like the only character I like in that show. So I'm not gonna go and make a ton of fan art of Gojo or Sukuna or Nanami or Toji. I don't like Chainsaw Man, and I actively cannot stand a single character in that show. I don't play Genshin Impact, and I know nothing about any of the characters in that game. All of this leads me to say that I just can't really make myself make fan art of something that I'm just not a fan of or don't like, even if it's what's popular. To me, that just comes off as disingenuous, and I've found that if I'm working on a piece I don't like, that piece is not going to end up looking good. If I don't enjoy it, it's just not going to look good or be something that I'm proud of. Another challenge is that even in the shows that I do like, I don't like the characters that are popular. So take My Hero Academia as an example, since I'm drawing Mina in this footage. Super popular anime. Very, very popular. Most people know it. Very mainstream. However, I don't really like Deku, or Todoroki, or Shigaraki, or Uraraka, or Ida, or Hawks. I wouldn't even really say I'm a fan of Bakugo. I don't really find him to be an interesting subject to draw either. My favorite characters are Denki Kaminari, and Jiro, and Sero, and Mina, and other smaller side characters. So really, the only characters that I want to draw are the ones that are less popular because they just happen to be the ones that I like. Building off of that, along with not really liking what's popular, I found another struggle I've had is that a lot of the things I like to make fan art for are things that are more niche, smaller fandoms, smaller shows and media, characters and franchises that just frankly aren't that popular. Let's take Naruto as an example. I love Naruto as a show so much, one of my favorite franchises ever. My favorite characters in Naruto are Sasori, Deidara, Suigetsu, Minato, Kisame, and Naruto himself. In the grand scheme of Naruto's cast, the only one who really makes it into the top most popular characters is Naruto himself, and maybe sometimes Minato. Itachi and Tobi are usually the only Akatsuki members who make the cut into merch and fan art that you usually see, and out of all those characters that I listed, Deidara and Sasori are personally my favorites ever. I love them but I worry about spending time making fan art for them when they're just not as popular as other characters in the show are. Another example is a franchise that is itself really small that I absolutely love and do want to make fan art for, but I just haven't because it's really small. And that franchise is the Disney fairies. I grew up with Disney fairies, I read all the books, I was in love with the art and the characters, and the artwork influenced my style to this day, 
and I'd love nothing more than to make fan art for the Disney fairies for myself and turn it into stickers and prints. But it's such a small franchise. It's so niche. Who's who's actually gonna know who Ronnie is? Who's gonna know who Fyra, Bess, and Beck are? Who's going to know who Prilla is? It's just such a small franchise and its lack of popularity and an active fan base really discourages me from making and posting fan art for it. This also ties into the next struggle that I really didn't break free from until January of this year, so just a couple months ago at the time of filming this video, and that's as a small business owner, it's my job to make art that's not just personal to me, but also something I could potentially make into a product to sell as stickers, prints, or apparel in my shop. Because of my issues with not liking the popular things, I didn't want to be putting stickers and prints of something that I like into my shop and then have no one buy it because it's just so niche. That's not a good business model at all, really. However, this became an extremely unhealthy mindset for me, especially after I opened my Etsy store in May of 2023, because I became very fixated on only creating art that I could turn into products. Every time I would sit down to draw something or sketch something in my sketchbook, I somehow convinced myself that what I was making I would only make if it was something I could turn into a product in my store. Admittedly, this was only made worse by my parents, who understandably are stressed about me choosing art as a career. Too many times to count, I would finish a piece or be working on a piece, and a parent would come look over my shoulder and ask if I was planning to sell what I was making, as if money was the only thing that mattered. In the art world specifically, I see this as a huge problem for my own progression, my love for art, and my own creative process. This mindset took a really negative toll on me both emotionally and physically. I tied my self-worth entirely to what I was capable of selling, and I determined my own personal happiness by how well my business was doing rather than my own emotional well-being. I basically completely ignored the love of the process and had basically abandoned the entire notion of art for art's sake. I did make a few passion pieces, but the majority of my work was focused exclusively on product. At the start of this year, 2024, things did change. I was attending Anime Washington with some friends where I planned to meet Trina Nishimura, the voice actress for Jiro, and Kyle Phillips, the voice for Denki Kaminari. I'd gone to Rose City Comic Con with friends to meet Steve Bloom, and I had him sign a digital illustration of Spike Spiegel that I'd made, but I wasn't super happy with the piece despite how much he liked it. I knew I wanted to make something for both of the voice actors to sign, but I was frankly in a slump. I hated the idea of making digital pieces for me to print and have them sign. I wasn't happy with my style, I didn't feel confident in my digital style, and I didn't have a ton of free time to spend making something that detailed either. So I figured the next best thing I could do was to do some art in my sketchbook of both characters and have them sign the sketchbook. That turned out to be the best decision I'd ever made. I drew Jiro first, using a really limited color palette of just purple, pink, my black fineliner, and my white pen. That limited color palette allowed me to be really sketchy. I played with expressions and poses, and overall I created something that I was surprisingly really happy with. And then I did the same thing of a sketchbook spread with Denki Kaminari literally the day before the convention. And to my surprise, I was having fun. I was enjoying the process so much. I was having so much fun finding ways to pose these characters and to play with how to draw them in my style. I was having fun making fan art again without the stress of making something that was a finished, marketable piece of art. I did end up making stickers of some of the drawings to give to both the voice actors, which they really loved, and then I started getting asked if I sold stickers and if I had a shop. This convinced me to make stickers of Jiro and Denki and put them in my shop. And then I drew the Mina Ashido spread that you're seeing in front of you and I drew Kirishima shortly after. But the reaction to my sketchbook art, the excitement and love over it, made me realize just what I had been missing. It wasn't about making something to sell, it was just about enjoying the process. I made a mental note to myself that I was going to keep doing this, I was going to keep making fan art of characters that I like, even if they're not as popular, and keep doing them in my sketchbook, playing with colors, layering, and texture, and arranging the composition in a way so I couldn't turn the drawings into prints. I stopped thinking about my art as a product and just as art. As a result, I feel like I've become far happier with myself and my work, and I'm actually open now to creating things that make me happy, things that I don't have to sell. It's let me experiment more and explore more of what I enjoy with art, such as narratives, characters, 
colors, and scenes. I made a resolution to myself that this year my sketchbook wasn't going to be a place where I just dump ideas for projects and products. Instead, it was going to be my safe space to intentionally explore and play and spend time discovering myself and my art. It's become a beautiful thing I enjoy working in and looking at, and I actively look forward to sitting down to draw characters. They may not be characters that are popular, but they're characters that I like and I enjoy seeing. It's a place of intention and it's a place of play. At least that's just my experience. It's definitely very personal to me, but I know that there are others out there who have shared in at least some of my experiences. And what I hope I can convey with everything I've shared and shown in this video is that it's extremely important to just make art for yourself and for art's sake. It's really unhealthy to ignore that. I think that art is at its purest when it's made out of nothing but pure passion and love for the process or trust in the process. It's okay to like niche things and to make art for niche things. And you shouldn't feel like you need to go hardcore into tackling your weaknesses all the time. You should allow yourself to use your strengths without being too comfortable in them that you don't ever step out or try anything new. You still need to be open to experimentation and trying new things. I've personally learned a lot this year just by being open to play and experiment and it's definitely helped improve my art as well as my physical and mental health. As an added note, take breaks. It's okay and necessary to not be creating something every day, and that's something that was very difficult for me to learn. Do things that aren't creative. Spend time with friends and family, watch movies you like, go outside, be in nature for a while. It all helps. It, it really, really helps. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say. I definitely hope you enjoyed the video and watching me work on this sketchbook spread of Mina. Stickers of her, Jiro, Denki, and Kirishima are all in my shop, so if you like what you're seeing, you can have one of these little guys for yourself. I know it's ironic that I talked about not making things to sell, then promoting stickers in my shop, but the real trick here is that I decided that I could only possibly sell these things after I'd made them. I didn't make them with the intention to sell them. I didn't realize, oh, I could I could sell these until after I'd made them. So I went in with just the intention to draw and to create characters and draw characters that I like and not to make something to sell. Anyway, I think that's all for now. I definitely hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that you were able to relate to it in some way or that someone out there relates to this in some way. Yeah, I, I think that is everything, so I'll see you all in my next video.